You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Markham Love versus Tucker Golston. Thank you, Jerome. You're welcome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Okay. Ms. Markham Love, you're here because you say your childhood was a complete nightmare. Wow. You claim your mother, Ms. Nasiri Poor, lost you to foster care and left you torn between two fathers, including the defendant. Now, Mr. Tucker, you say a bomb was dropped on you when years ago you showed up to a court hearing to gain custody of Ms. Markham Love. You claimed that day her mother delivered the news to you that you may not be her biological father. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Ms. Markham Love's other potential father, Mr. Golston, questions paternity and will hear the results of both of the DNA tests shortly. So, Ms. Markham Love, please explain to the court, why was your childhood a nightmare? I got put in foster care, had to live with complete strangers. I don't have respect for authority or anyone telling me what to do or even Shireen. I don't have a close bond with her. I've been living from foster home to foster home. I found out at 12 that Myron here, Mr. Tucker, may not be my father. Really? Yes. Now, how did you find that out? Shireen had told my grandma. Miss Nasiri Poor. Miss Nasiri Poor. Told my grandmother, and um, it was related to me. And so when you heard that, what did you think? I felt hurt and betrayed and uh, lost with emotion. Did you ever meet the person they said was supposed to be your biological yes, father? Yes, Your Honor. I met him one time when I was 12. Um, he took me and my sister out to ice cream. That was the only time I seen him. I barely talked to him on Facebook, but it's never been, no, oh, you're my daughter, nothing like that. So now, Mr. Tucker, you obviously were under the impression that this was your biological daughter as well. Yes. When I got a letter, a letter in the mail stating that my daughter was in foster care, and I went to Sacramento to go to court to try to get her, the city report stood up and said that I might not be the father. So, you had no doubts in your mind. That's not true. Yes, it was. No, it's not. Your Honor, that's not true. When I found out I was pregnant, I was four months pregnant, I told Myron it could be between the M and another man. I never gave no names. He left me and went to L.A., supposedly. I did not go when to But actually, no. he was with his girlfriend at the time that was, was pregnant not, as well. No, 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 no. So, I did tell him that it could be between two guys. I didn't tell Brittany because she's, only, she's a, a child. Then right, but you're saying sure you were honest enough. with him. I was honest with him and Darnell Golston. Yes, I was. I'm hurt, just like Brittany's hurt. Brittany's torn apart. No, but I did this, not want this... her to know none of this until she was able to understand it. My mom told her. No, she should have known way before this. Way before what? Like when she was a baby. So no, she you don't have understand that you're a child. <clears throat> a baby. Maybe you don't understand. No, I'm talking about a baby. His suggestion is is. There should have been a test done years ago so she would grow up knowing, knowing who her biological father is. for it then. Pay for it. I'm paying child support still. Pay for it. If I would have known, I would have paid for it then. You knew so, when she was 12. You said it still isn't done. Wait, She's 22 years old now. Wait, 12 years old. Where was she at? In foster care. So I was more worried about getting her out. Why didn't you get her, her then? Her Why didn't you have the DNA done so you could have got her out of foster care? So listen. There's a lot of why arguing back and forth. Why did you do the things forth. for her to get in foster care? If, if I was such a bad mom, All right, at that listen, time, you listen, should have done Listen, about listen, listen. Let's calm down. Mr. Tucker, Ugh. back then, when you say the test should have been taken, did you consider taking one? Why didn't you? I mean, that's kind of a good because question. Because I, I didn't find out. Why not just say, I'd like to take a DNA test? I didn't find out that I was in question until the court date. So, in your mind, you were the father. There was no reason to take a test. Your exactly. Honor, That's seven the way years I still feel so right now. So, once you heard oh this in court... At seven years old... Did you say, I'd like a test now? No. Exactly. So, at that point, why not? You just said... Because I feel in my heart that she's mine. All right. So, I see this is making you emotional. I don't pity and for you him. feel hurt because you, he you his, feel, ma'am, if you don't be quiet and let me get a question out. <laughs> Mr. Tucker, 
what is it exactly you're feeling? Frustration or you're hurt for the girl you believe to be your daughter? What is this you're that feeling? Hurt for my daughter. I don't want to be in this situation. Miss <sighs> Markham Love? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that this man, whether or not he is your biological father, he hurts for you because he knows what you've been through? Yes. Um, we used to share the same last name, and then I was adopted at 14. He was on my original birth certificate as my father. I have a transcript saying that my last name used to be Tucker. Jerome, let me see that, please. And then I have a birth certificate showing that my last name has switched. I do not have the birth certificate when my last name was Tucker. So this is your school transcript? Yes. And it's showing that your last name was Tucker? Yes. And it wasn't until you were adopted that it was changed to your adoptive parent's last name? Exactly. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Was he involved in your life at all as a child? Um, growing up, I was living in Bakersfield with him. Um, and then when I turned five, we moved to Sacramento and he continued to reside in Bakersfield. When I got put in foster care at seven, he was granted visitations with me. And the last time I seen him was when I was nine. And from nine to 16, I did not see him. So Ms. Nasir report, he states he was on the birth certificate. You agree with that? Yes, you did let him, there. he was there he was when there. she was born. Yes, ma'am. So, and so when Brittany says that, when Brittany says that she lived with him at five years old, she resided with us. We had a place together. Okay. But at the same time, I just had Brittany, and she's a month old. His cousin comes over and asks where he's at. I said, I don't know, he's playing basketball. He went and got married at his reception. So, so that's when it all fell apart, and I still so accepted wait, it. So wait, you all living together as a family. Yes, we yeah, were. With a beautiful no, no. baby. Yes, we were. So Mr. Tucker, <laughs> you supposed to be out playing basketball? Mm. And where were you? Wedding reception. What? There's a lot more to this mm. story. No, 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 don't start talking, talking soft now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were where? There's a whole lot more to this story than what she's saying. So I just need to understand, because I feel like we could be here all night listening to what happened in this relationship, but it's true that you were living with them as a family and then you disappeared and that really meant you went and got married to someone else? Yes. How could you disappear like that and Not go once, marry but someone twice. else? You're trying to put this on me. Not but once, but you're twice. You're talking about you cheated on me with a pizza guy, though. I, you were in L.A. You said you were living in L.A. She accepted it. So I was in love with him the whole time, and I'm still probably in love with him. How you in love? With, how you was in love with me, and you cheated on me with how a pizza guy? How did I cheat on you? You weren't even there. Let's just get it straight, Miss Nasiri Poor. So this pizza man <laughs> is the other potential biological father. What happened? Now you, you got emotional. Because it's like, what um, I did a lot of wrong in my life. And it's like, whenever he left me, four months after we met, said he was going to LA, he didn't go to LA. He left me. Mm -hmm. So a month later, I slept with Darnell, Mr. Golston. So well, yeah. I'm glad you clarified that. It wasn't like I cheated it on him. It wasn't like he rang the doorbell with the pizza no, and then you slept no, with him. No. So the bottom line is both of these men and you you slept with during the time of conception. Yes, ma'am. And you yourself honestly don't know which one is Miss Markham Love's father. No, I do not. And I was honest with Mr. Golston as well. I told him from when I was like five months pregnant, he could be the possible father. I see the pain in your eyes. You say and you admit <laughs> that you've made some mistakes. I've done a lot of mistakes, Your but Honor. But ultimately, I, made a lot of mistakes. I can tell you love your daughter. I do love my daughter, but you know what? I went to prison. I'd done a lot of bad things in my life. I forgave myself. When I got out, I asked her for, you know, when she's ready to forgive me. She said she did forgive me. Apparently not, because now I'm Shireen. I'm not mommy no more. I had to earn that. You know, I'm sure I had to earn that. I'm trying my best. I do my best. But if I was on drugs and I was such a dope fiend, Myron, that you should have stepped up and took her if I was doing so bad. You shouldn't have let me take her. So, Ms. Mysterio, I see 
Even when you're talking, you're looking me right in the eye, but you barely look at your daughter. Because I know she's ashamed of me. She's ashamed of me because I love her with all my heart. I love my daughter. I can tell. She's my and baby. And that's why you're here, because you're in court. I'm here to support her. Because you want to want right your wrongs, and you want to support your daughter. Yes, ma'am. It's not for him. It's not for him. It's for her and her and my grandson. They deserve Ms. to Markham know. Ms. Markham Love? Yes, Your Honor. Have you forgiven her? At one time I did, and you know, my mind gets racing, and I start thinking about all the other stuff, and I have a son. <clears throat> my son's gonna be three next month, so I know you can be a parent and not be in the same household. Right. I am not with my son's father. I have a wonderful boyfriend who's been there helping raise my son. Mm -hmm. So I know you can be a parent outside of the household, and I feel that that was not there. Ms. Markham Love, as you look at these two pictures here, what do you see of yourself? It's like you're going back and forth between Mr. Golston on the left and Mr. Tucker on the right. As a child, what did that feel like to you? Mr. Tucker is who I know that has been there. I've grown relationship with his kids. I go out there for family reunions and everything else. Mr. Goldstein, I don't know. That was the only time I seen him. Just that one time? Just that one time. In your entire life? Whole life. And that was 10 years ago. Mr. Tucker, why is it that you just disappeared? I didn't disappear by choice. They had moved to Sacramento. Well, I, I didn't there have no, are planes, buses, but I didn't cars. But no, I didn't have no phone number, no contact information at all. Only way I got contact with them is when they sent me the letter stating my daughter was in foster care. That was it. And then when I was going to court to do parenting classes and stuff, I get a letter stating that my parental rights was forfeited. Because you didn't want to do the classes. And so... You wasn't there, you don't know what I did. I was there every week to see my daughter. And if I couldn't make it, I called her. And do you remember that time? Yes. The last time I seen him, I was nine. And I got put in foster care at seven. So that was three years after I was put in foster care. But from nine to 16, we had no contact. You knew this man to be your father your whole life, and then you realize he may not be. You don't really have a relationship with Mr. Golston. What do you hope for today? I just want closure. So. If Mr. Tucker is my father, I know his family. If Mr. Goldstein is my father, I would want to know his family. And how about you, Mr. Tucker? What are your hopes? That she has closure. I'm just doing this for her so she'll know. In my heart, I feel like she's my daughter anyway. Ms. Nasiripour? What are your hopes today, ma'am? My hopes today is for Brittany to be happy and know who her father is. And like she said, she does know her brothers and sisters very well. I don't hate Mr. Tucker. I just wish that he would quit badgering me because I, I, I know what my, my, what my mistakes were. And I deal with them every day of my life. And to upset my daughter and have that, it's more like hate towards me she has. And I just want us to come together and be able to work it out and maybe one day she could forgive me. I understand. Jerome, may I have the results, please? Can I say one more thing? Yes, ma'am, you may. The way Ms. Nasiripour feels, Mr. Tucker should feel the same way, because there's, I do not treat them no and different. I, I think because of this, not knowing has put the distance. You said well, you, you, you loved her regardless. I do, but not knowing as a man, it does hurt. So why don't we put an end to the hurt? Brittany, I'm sorry. I really am sorry for keeping it from you. Are we ready for the results? Yes. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Markham Love v. Tucker Golston, as it pertains to the paternity of Miss Brittany Markham Love, it has been determined that Mr. Golston is not her father. Do you want to watch Paternity Court on TV? Go to paternitycourt.tv to find your local listings. In the case of Markham Love v. Tucker Golston, as it pertains to 22-year-old Brittany Markham Love, 
Mr. Tucker, you are not her father. Wow. <sighs> Miss Nasiripur, that's a shocker. Yeah, it is. Are you okay, Brittany? I'll be fine. I owe you <clears throat> both an apology, sorry. How do you feel right now? Yeah. Hurt, sad, angry. The one thing I can say is at least you know definitively who is not your father. And I hope sincerely that you're still happy you came here today. Yes, I am. Good. And mom, I know it's going to be rough for you. And you are going to have a lot of explaining to do and a lot of making up to do and a lot of talking with your daughter. And you stand up, you take whatever you gotta take, you deal with whatever you gotta deal with, and you help her. If she wants to try to find her biological father, you help her, you understand? Yes, ma'am. Good luck to all of you. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Jerome, can you please escort Miss Markham Love up to the bench? Yes. Listen, sometimes as mothers, we have the strength to do things that we may not even have the strength to do for ourselves. You know that feeling, right? You can yes. move a mountain, can't you? <laughs> right? Yes. Right? So I know this wasn't what you wanted and the closure that you wanted didn't happen today, but I do believe you can get the closure you're looking for if you just keep searching, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, take care. Honey. Thank you.